but what ghosts, Ian, do you know that reside here? Like, what did you hear or what have you read? I've picked up on a couple of them, so. Well, um, I, okay, I want to go back to the, to the, um, the Underground Railroad. Oh, yes, yes, let's do Because that. It's, it's believed that some of the, uh, the runaway slaves that were, were sheltering in the, uh, in the mansion station house, um, it's possible that some of them died from their ordeal um, while they were there. And it's believed that they are possibly buried somewhere on the property. And there's, there's reports of people who go in there. Um, and if you, if you get down there, Mm -hmm. um there's there's reports of people hearing footsteps disembodied voices seeing shadow figures um apparitions physical touches there's i know um an account of a, a couple of women who claim they've actually been physically scratched oh interesting that you say that because i read um there was a, a really quite poignant story of um one of the uh people that were fleeing for their life and she had been wounded somewhere along the way been hurt they'd hit her in the head somebody had tried to to hurt her and when she arrived here at the house um she was amongst several that had come come there at that time and she wasn't well they tried to help her they you know they tried to aid her as best as she could and as best they could to to help her and unfortunately she passed away uh, and she's said to be there and the one thing that i i found interesting was that the people that have reported um feeling her and and you know sort of having interaction with her was that she's not angry and she's not malicious. She's actually quite lovely in terms of her spirit that's been left behind and that she, I guess, you know, and, and until I'm there and I can actually pick up on this, but the story says that she feels quite comfortable being there and that she's not, she's not unhappy. So, so there's something there. Um, did you come across the story, Ian, of the little girl? I've heard the story. Um, oh. Yeah, the little girl, she fell, apparently, this is the same story. Mm -hmm. She fell from the second floor that there was a little balcony at one time. Yes, apparently right here. Yes, Aww. that door, door, that door right there. There used to be a oh, balcony no. How that sad. The went out onto, mm -hmm. and she fell from it, but as, and, and was, and was killed. Mm -hmm. But as I say, I've heard the story, but what I have not heard is exactly who this little girl is. So, I've never heard a word about it. So I've just kind of discounted for, for know, myself as a paranormal one, researcher. This I've just actually, discounted that story because there's there's nothing out there that says, why was this girl there? Who was yeah, she? Actually, there, there is. There is. Oh, there in, is. And the house has records. The museum themselves have it. So oh, she was a I child see. Of, of one of the family members. She was about six to eight years old and she was ill. She had possibly, um, you know, a, a, a fever. It could have been scarlet fever. It could have been strep. It could have been. And she, it was the winter time. And she, I guess she was a little bit disoriented and she opened the door and she somehow slipped and fell over the railing. Um, because, you know, when you're sort of in that fever state, you, you don't quite no reality from you know fantasy at that point and so they believe that she fell and she you know she fell and she died um she has been picked up quite a few times from from researchers from what i from what i hear so really? again one of those stories that uh, when i get there i'll see if i can get a name i can try to get more information but it is listed in the history of the house so I don't know that they'd actually list that if it wasn't something that they could verify. When um, I do paranormal investigations, I like to go in blind. I don't know if you do as well, Seeker. It's I, just do, I do, I do, yes. I don't like to look, know any of the history, nothing. I just go in and see what comes up and what I can pick up. That feels more genuine. It does, it does. Than, yeah. But sometimes we do know the stories, right? And, and again, you know, we can either we can either 
you know, collaborate with those or we get other stories. So I'm, I mean, I, I prefer to not know about things, but when I do know, I'm not going to shut it all down and go, oh, well, I'm not going to get anything because I'm just open more to maybe expanding on those stories or finding out more if I'm, if I'm able to get better communication, um, you know, and, and can get more of a story, but there's that story as well. So um, what else did you come across? Well, Anna? there is a, there's a popular paranormal story that um, it's actually an oral history that comes down through the through the family of George Adams, and it's about a bounty hunter that oh, um, I did hear this one approached yes. the bounty property hunter. when when the house was a was an underground railroad station, yes. and uh, this bounty hunter he rode up to the to the building and banged on the door, and uh, when George Adams answered the door, this bounty hunter said. I know that you have slaves hiding in there. I demand that you turn them over to me so I can take them back and, and collect the bounty. Oh my so goodness. George Adams being who he was, apparently he pulled out his, his revolver mm -hmm. and George Adams and this bounty hunter had a standoff. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. That's so, and, I love that. <laughs> yeah. And, and this standoff kept going until some of the ranch hands from the barn or the, the stable area mm -hmm. saw what was going on and they grabbed their rifles yeah. and they came out mm -hmm. to, to protect their, to protect yep. their boss. And um, seeing that he was outnumbered, the bounty hunter took off and, you know, and hightailed it out of there. Now, <laughs> what I've heard, uh, I've heard, and this actually comes from an interview I saw of, George J. Adams, who was okay. the great, great, great grandson of of George, mm -hmm, senior uh, of the George Adams, mm -hmm. and um, that story about the bounty hunter that is actually documented. But now I love comes, that. I love that story. Here, it's fantastic. Yeah. So that that's actually documented history. But now here comes the fun aspect of it, that there's a continuation of the story that, oh. okay, is it, is it real? Is it legend? No one knows. So what happened is when the bounty hunter took off, the ranch hands, they chased him back to where he was in camp, to his campground, and they captured him. And they dragged him. Yes, back I heard this too. Yeah. To this is property. movie magic right here. This yeah. <laughs> is the movie waiting to happen. <laughs> yeah, so they captured him. They dragged him back to to Prospect Place. They put him in the barn, and they strung him up in the rafters yeah, of the yeah. barn, and they hanged him. So oh, again, okay. there is there's this story that they hung him. They hung him, um, and that his body is also buried somewhere on the property and people say that again this contributes to the paranormal aspects of the property um hauntings within the barn um, again people claim to see shadow figures um wow scratched people have recorded evps but but again that 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 screams ghost story right it uh, i love <laughs> they, it that's what this, that, that's uh, what the this is about, that's what yes, we're talking yes. about. They say totally that the bounty part hunter of the coming up to the did. door and having the standoff with George Adams is documented. The rest of it. Now, I, I thought when I was on the website, they were talking about George Adams' grave and, and they said it was unmarked. Is that correct? No, George Adams is, <coughs> excuse me, George Adams is buried. Is he buried on the property as well? No. Uh, he is buried in the Dresden Cemetery. Oh, right. right. Yeah, okay. yeah, in, in Dresden, Ohio. Oh, okay then. Right. So, now, yeah, so it's kind of interesting. Now, there's one more thing that I have here that contributes to the um, what, could, what could be... Um, why the the property has paranormal hauntings that in 1912 there was a 
very serious train accident that happened nearby the property. And there was a passenger train that had become disabled and it was sitting there broken on the tracks. And what happened is a second passenger train came up at high speed mm -hmm. behind it and smashed into the back of the first train. And so in addition to the injuries that, that would have happened from the collision, the second steam engine, when it hit the back of the, the first train, the steam engine exploded. And of course, those old locomotives, you know, a lot of people were scalded very badly from the steam of this exploding locomotive. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not familiar with the layout of the, the, the geography of that part of Ohio, but apparently mm -hmm. what they needed to do was to get a third train to come in to, to remove the, the injured and the, and, the, and the dead. And until they could clear up the accident, um, the injured were all moved into the basement of the mansion. So it's a little bit like the whole thing in Dundas. Yes. <laughs> With the yeah. holiday train and the bodies and the people moved into the school. Yeah, so where, where they had, where they had um, sheltered the enslaved um, African Americans um, okay. during the, the, the Underground Railroad, that same basement was used to shelter these injured train passengers until they could be transported to the hospital in Dresden. And um, that's, that's another thing that says, well, that could have contributed to the, the paranormal aspects because it's, it's unknown actually if any of them actually died while they were in the basement of the building. Mm 